it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The short circuit. Are you sure we're allowed to play in your dad's office? We're not gonna play in here. We came here on a tour. I think this place is like a real museum. Just take a look at that. I have no idea what it is. And this thing is a complete mystery. <laughs> Keep it down, this is a museum, you know? <laughs> what a great museum guide you are. You know absolutely nothing. How can you say you don't know? I know. I'd like to run a test here, on the capacitor. On this one? Don't, don't touch. touch! Why can't I? It's not a museum. Because it's dangerous. If you touch it, the shock could be deadly. But you two are touching it all the time. I've seen it. The only time is when the device is turned off. And right now, the device is running. For many centuries, the Fixies only had to work on mechanical devices. But after the discovery of electricity, the Fixies had to master electrical devices as well. At first, Fixies were getting terrible shocks, and they really, really hurt. Over time, the Fixies figured out that you can't fix appliances when they are turned on, and bare wires should never, ever be touched. And Fixies also learned that electricity can travel not just through wires, but through plain old water. So that's why if a broken wire ever ends up in a puddle of water, you must never get close to it, or you could get a terrible shock. Fixies learn all these important rules, and they hope humans understand that they need to learn them as well. Look, now here's one I know about. It's an old radio my dad got for my grandpa. More than 60 years old, can you believe it? <gasps> Your grandpa? <laughs> the old radio. That was a joke. Is it still working? I don't know. Let's check. Got turned off. Maybe it was a short circuit. I'll go find out. <sighs> oh, so it was you who caused the short circuit. I was in here showing all these things to Nolik, and we wanted to turn on on the radio. We flipped the switch on, and then suddenly, kaboom, the lights go off. They're off <sighs> everywhere in the apartment. So then how can I even warm up my pizza now? Soon it will warm up all by itself, now that the refrigerator isn't working. Simka, uh, what is that thing you said? A short circuit. <laughs> Electricity goes back and forth from an appliance with two separate wires. For example, an iron uses the electricity it needs to get hot. But if those two wires start touching each other without the iron in the middle, then the wires will get hot instead. And this can cause the wires to burn out. When this happens, it's called a short circuit. Short circuits can happen when the coating around a wire is worn out, or when an appliance is broken on the inside of it. So when you tried turning on that old broken radio, the wires in the apartment started burning. Does that mean all the wires got destroyed? Don't worry. In our apartment, there's an automatic switch to stop that. It turns off the electricity when the wires start getting too hot. Oof. And what about that, uh, uh, automatic switch? Is that something you need your mom and dad to turn on? No question. You definitely would. But you have us. Yeah! And we have Papus and Masia. I'll go tell them what happened here. And you guys, you turn off the radio. But we'll get electrocuted. What do you mean, electrocuted? Thanks to you, there's no electricity. Are you ready? Pull it up. Hooray! 
Tadish! So, Tom Thomas, what are we doing next? Hmm, why don't we continue with our tour? Hey, wait for me! I'm coming! Hey, wait, I thought you were fixing the television with Papus and Masia. They asked me to come here and stay with you on your awesome museum tour. That way, there'll be less for them to fix in here later. <laughs> They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. GPS. Next. I'm next. Five. One, two, three, three. And. Wait, I gotta choose a route. Should I go here or there? Two's already. Nolik, what are you doing over there? Nothing at all. Just waiting at my place. Good. And don't get off it. Well, Fire? What was that? The alarm on my fixie tab. Oh, our lesson's about to start. Hurry! What about the game? Later! As soon as young fixies enter their first year of fixie school, everyone gets their own fixie tab. It's a little computer that can do anything at all. Well, almost anything at all. Studying with a fixie tab is fantastic. You can read it just like a book and write in it just like writing in a notebook. You can use a fixie tab to listen to music, watch movies, find your way around, and talk, text, and send letters to your friends. And if you want, you can use a fixie tab to go on to the internet that humans use, or you can visit the secret fixie internet, where you can find news about the world of the fixies. And fixie tabs have games on them, too. Of course, these games can be a lot of fun, but you shouldn't play games until your homework is all done. Faster, or we'll be late! I know a shortcut we can use, this way. Now which way do we go? I need to remember the route. I think it's this way, or it could be that way. Well, which is it, this or that? Uh, I have no clue. Uh-huh. So what's our plan? We'll go back and start again. We flew in from there, right? No, I think it was there. That's not how we flew in, it was there. Ah, uh, I think we're lost in here. Uh-oh. No, like, stop the panicking. I only went, uh-oh, I'm not panicking yet. It's your fault, Fire. I know a shortcut. Go this way. How are we gonna get out of here? How do I know? All I know is that we're late for our lesson. Thanks to someone. It wasn't on purpose, I swear. Now Grandpa's will punish us. <gasps> What's going on? Well, I think I found a way to get out. Which way? Right here. I forgot that inside of my fixie tab is a GPS navigator. Class, uh, what's a navigator? A GPS navigator is an interactive electronic map that can help you find your way around. The navigator can figure out where you are by using signals that are sent to it from satellites. All you have to do is type the address of the place you want to go into it, and the GPS can figure out a route to get you there. And then it helps you as you go by telling you where and when you need to turn, so you can easily get to your destination. Let's see. Right now, we're here. And where do we need to go? <laughs> you know where to school. But where is that? Are you joking? In the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. Can you be quiet? Where do you want to go? The laboratory of Professor Eugenius. P 
Please wait while I chart out the route. Ha! It did it! <laughs> the navigator says to go there! Hey, what are you doing over there? Come on! And if you happen to go off route, the navigator will give you a different way to... Well, you finally made it. Unfortunately, you missed an important lesson today. We got lost. Forgive us. In case you're wondering, we were studying navigators. And you know what? We just used a navigator to get here. Yeah, it showed us the way we had to go. Well, that's certainly quite lucky for you because now you don't get an F. But from now on, kids, you have to get here on time. I promise you that, because now we know where to get our shortcuts from. Can you believe that pixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. The vacuum. What's the point of cleaning up toys? You're just gonna go take them out again later. You said it! Tom Thomas, if you're done cleaning up, go and eat your lunch! Okay, be there soon. Nolik, you wait for me? Uh-huh. He calls this cleaning up. my mom. She started vacuuming. possible a vacuum cleaner can take all that dust in oh, and none of it gets back out. Oh, come on. It's simple. They taught us about it way back in third grade of Fixie School. <laughs> you can think of a vacuum cleaner as nothing more than a fan with a net. The fan spins backwards, so it sucks in air with dust and dirt. If you put a net in front of the fan, the net will catch everything that is in the air and let the air pass through. Then all you need to do is add a pipe and you've got yourself a vacuum cleaner. But instead of a net, vacuum cleaners use special bags to collect the dust and dirt. It's as simple as that. Oh, whoa, Simka. Uh, no, like, could he get sucked into the vacuum? Oh, no! Did he stay back there? Tom Thomas, what's the matter? Uh, uh, Mom, I can, I can, I can finish vacuuming you. I, I mean, for you. All right, I'll go clean the dishes. No lick, no lick. Yeah! 
<coughs> this stuff is just awful. And it's awfully bad for you, too. Dust is a tiny enemy. It's so small and unnoticeable. But if dust gets inside machines and appliances, it's a disaster just waiting to happen. It can keep gears from turning properly. Dust can make appliances overheat. And if dust gets onto electric contacts, it can create a short circuit that can even cause a fire. That's why we fixies have to constantly clean the insides of appliances from dust. Even though a lot of us are allergic to it. Hee hee ha choo! If only people would just dust a little more often than they do right now. Ha 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 choo! At least people could dust more on the outside. That would make our work so much easier. And their equipment would break a whole lot less often. Will, did you find him? No! It's all my fault. My mom asked me to clean up my toys, and I didn't just do it like she asked. Now it sucked him in because of me. And I already promised to clean up my toys. And why are you sneezing? To keep you company. So you'd feel a little better. <laughs> <laughs> Our manipulator works just perfectly. Good! So that means that we're free to go. Great. See you later. All right, finally. Now it's our turn to experiment with that manipulator. And do you know how to operate this m manipulator? <laughs> Why do you think we were spying? A manipulator is a kind of mechanical arm that people use for difficult or dangerous work. To control a manipulator, humans use a remote control or a joystick. The operator gives the command, and the mechanical arm grabs and moves the load. Some robotic manipulators don't even need to be steered by an operator. They're controlled by computers and can work without people being there at all, even on the moon. Huh. What is this button for? Uh-huh. How about this one? Uh-huh. Would you like to take a ride right now? Uh, you're scared. Scared? Not one bit. Then off we go. Yeah, cool. Ha, this is totally awesome. Well, hang on. This is going to get even awesomer. Professor? Hmm, strange. What made this ladder just fall over? Ah! Am I crazy? Or is someone here? Oh, calm down. Calm down now. Poor Elisa. Yeah, you're completely overworked. Who's here? Achoo! Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. My compact's gone. Oh, dear. What's going on? Ah! Stop this nonsense right now, or I'll call the police on you. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in... Ah! Where are you pulling me? 
I'm going to faint. I'm warning you. That's all. Goodbye. Throughout the world, humans use manipulators for all sorts of work. In factories, manipulators are used to lift and move heavy loads. They can also hand out the parts needed for assembly or even attach these parts themselves. In hospitals, more precise manipulators are used by doctors to help perform operations. Manipulators are also used in places where the work is simply too dangerous for people. For instance, where there are deadly chemicals, or places where humans can't get to easily. Like somewhere underground where there isn't enough space to move, or deep under the water. Or in outer space where there's absolutely no <laughs> air to breathe. So you see, mechanical arms are helpful in all sorts of places where humans are unable to reach things with their own arms. Hang on, Nolik. How can I get that thing open? Ugh, I got it! Yes? Who's there? Ah! What's going on? Uh, uh, achoo! Ah! 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 No, no lick? What are you doing in there? Achoo! We just <laughs> took a little test flight. Is this yours? <gasps> Elisa! Elisa! Professor Eugenius, I was attacked by a crazy arm. The manipulator. <laughs> it's your imagination. Look, it's come back. Stop, stop, I'm telling you. Professor Eugenius, it heard what you just said. Calm down, it's okay. It was a little malfunction, but I took care of it. You are just astounding. And don't think that I'm through with you. With me? With you? <laughs> no, no, with the manipulator. Let's go, Elisa. Yeah, let's go, Professor. Great job, fire. And why fire? Can you believe that pixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. when you're camping. Listen, Tom Thomas, just leave a little room for me in there. I'm good to have when you're camping, too. I'll leave you some room. Just hide in there so Dad won't see you. And you can't tell Simka anything about me going with you. All right. And last on the list, a few cans of meat. Hi, Tom Thomas. Have you seen Nolik? No. Then who did I just hear you talking with? I, uh, I was just reading the label. Huh, where did Nolik run off to? Simka, do you know, um, how come these cans have no way to open them so you can taste what's inside? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Don't you know what makes canned food special? It comes in a can. <laughs> the thing that's special about canned food is that it can get stored a long time without spoiling. You see, meat and vegetables spoil when harmful bacteria start multiplying inside of them. So, if you can get rid of the bad bacteria or stop them from getting into the food, the food will last a long time. That's why jars and cans are sealed very tightly. This stops harmful bacteria and air from getting inside and spoiling the food. So you're telling me that Nolik's not here, right? Huh. 
looks like he's really not here. <laughs> Who is that? Where? <gasps> All right, now I remember. There's another can I should take with me. There's something fishy happening here. Hey, guys. My mom threw this can out a long time ago, but I hid it for later. I knew I'd use it someday. And who were you talking to when you said guys? Moi? Uh, you're here and I'm here, and that's two of us. Look at this great can I got. There's nothing great about it. Put it down on the floor. You see? What? Oh, it's crooked, and so what? So what? It's all swollen. And when it's like that, you know that inside the can, bad bacteria is growing and spoiling the food that's in there. It went bad? There's a way to check. On every single can, you can find the date it's good until. Sooner or later, even canned food will go bad. And of course, dairy foods like yogurt or milk can spoil in just a few days. When you buy food in the store, it's very important to always check the expiration date. The expiration date's the last day that it's safe to eat that food without worrying that it may have gone bad. You can find the expiration date on each box, jar, or can of food, so pay attention. And be very careful not to buy or eat any food after its expiration date has passed. And if you see that a can is swollen, throw it away immediately. If you eat it, your belly can swell up, too. Unfortunately, when food spoils, it's impossible to unspoil it, and then even the fixies won't be able to help. Oh, my mom probably saw that this can went bad over a year ago. That's why she threw it into the trash. Right, shame on you for picking it out of there. You could have poisoned yourself and poisoned your dad as well. Yeah. And the other cans, are they swollen too? They're fine. Goodbye then. It's a shame I couldn't find Nolik around here. Papus wants to give him a brand new pack of mat as a present. To me? Aha, I gotcha. <laughs> I had a feeling you would try to sneak away in Tom Thomas's bag. You lied, that's not fair. And hiding, that's fair, right? Tom Thomas, are you ready? I'm ready. Great, then let's get going. Hooray! We're going camping. <sighs> I want to go camping, too. Don't worry, I'll go camping with you. Really? Really, really, really. To that house outside our window. See how huge it is? Toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clock stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The piggy bank. That's not what I'm doing. I'm storing it. This is a piggy bank. Oh, here's another coin. I don't like its snout. That's one very suspicious looking pig. Are you positive your money's safe with her? Don't worry. Whatever I put into my bank here is not getting back out. This piggy bank won't give up a cent. You greedy piggy. Come on, Nolik. Simka must have taught you about how banks work. <laughs> Humans came up with the idea of piggy banks because they wanted a good place to save their coins. For storing lots of money, people use a safe, a large metal box with a very strong lock. Now that kind of piggy bank's almost impossible to break open. The biggest safes are in banks. Banks use them to store their customers' money and other valuables. There are even safes in banks that are whole rooms. You'd need an awful lot of change to fill up one of these piggy banks. So why are you saving up all this money? For roller skates. How much more do you need to save? I don't know. I can't see if there's enough in there. 
then just go and open it. But there's no way to do that. The only way is to smash it real hard. So smash it. Yeah, forget it. I have nothing to put my money into. But what if there's already enough for roller skates? And what if there's not? All right, then I guess I'll count your money for you. Tidish! Oh, whoa! Tom Thomas, you've got a fortune in here! There are many different kinds of money, and they're not just coins, either. Long ago, people paid each other with shells and squirrel skins and even parrot feathers. And, of course, metal coins are more convenient than any of those things. And paper money is even more convenient than coins. One piece of paper can be worth as much as a hundred coins or even a thousand. All that needs to be done is to print more zeros on it and that's all. Today, humans can pay for almost anything without paper money or coins whatsoever. If you have enough money in the bank, you can just walk into a store, give the cashier your bank card, and take your purchase home with you without handing over any money. The bank knows how much money you spend, and they pay the store for you later. It's so convenient. So, will you count them? Here we go. One coin! And two coins! Wait, Nolik, what one coin, two coins? What are you counting? You have to add together all of the different numbers. Huh. You should have told me that before. Uh, I never learned how to. Yeah, that's what I figured. Come on out. What can I do? What if you try stacking the coins so they're like stairs? That's what I'm already doing, folks. Why don't you try tilting the piggy bank over? Hang on. Stop! I'm getting buried! Put it back the way it was before! This is worse! Ah! Just put the pig down! No, like, hang in there, please. I'll get some thread and lower it down to you. Ah! I can't get a hold of it. It's too far away. Hey, Tom Thomas, smash the piggy bank! What? Just smash your piggy bank. But I like it. And what, you don't like me? Of course I like you. Well, who do you like more? You're my friend, aren't you? Of course. Then smash the piggy bank, will you? Okay, Nolik, I'm gonna do it. Are you okay? I'm okay. <sighs> Thank you, Tom Thomas. Thank you, my friend. No problem. At least now you can count up how much money you have. Nah, there's no reason to do it. There's no way it's enough for roller skates. You sure? What a shame. But now you've got all of this money here to buy a piggy bank that's totally brand new. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The armor. Nolik, and I'll check the living room. Well, I just don't get it. Where could he be hiding? The office. We forgot to check in there.
inside the shark. <laughs> no, Lick. Tom Thomas couldn't even fit half of himself inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There, did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one, but I know that I heard a hee hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> hm. I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> 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 Got stuck. Where else could he be? Oh, who is that? Ah! of the night, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you gonna look for me? Armor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times. But the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds. And if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> <sighs> Great, Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Uh... Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Ooh, thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh, before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battles. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well there, did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? Nolik went to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> Fixies have a special sign I happen to discover. They hold three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. Please don't let their secret out. Shh. The dog. <sighs> it's 
about me? Pixies? No, it's too soccer. It sounds like she's angry with us. I wish I knew what that mad dog was thinking about. I'm thinking about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You better hide or people will see you. I'm leaving. See you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to rain. <clears throat> Choose Sokka. I have no time to play right now. I'm not playing. His feet are gonna get soaked. Tom Thomas, I'm off. Don't be late. Choose Sokka. That's enough. No, I need to go to school. He's got his math class today and he's leaving his math book. I'm trying to serve like a good job, but no one understands me. <laughs> Dogs have been serving people since ancient times, along with cows, horses, chickens, and other domestic animals. But of all of these animals, the dog was the very first. In the beginning, domesticated dogs looked like wolves. Over time, they started changing and were developed into dogs of many different breeds, from big shepherds to tiny chihuahuas. So a dog is not only a human's best friend, but his very first friend as well. of service dogs. Dogs that help people by carrying out a wide variety of different jobs, like protecting a house or a flock of sheep if the dogs are shepherds. Some working dogs help guards protect their borders, while others work for the police. There are sled dogs that transport people and loads in the north, where there's only snow and no roads. Some service dogs help blind people by helping them get to the places they need to go. And there are dogs that save people trapped on mountains. And that's not all. Dogs went up into space before humans. But don't think that dogs are just given these jobs. Oh, no. Like humans, dogs study for a long time before they're allowed to take on serious work. <laughs> Ah, that's all. There won't be a fire. Not today. Hooray! Well done, Chusaka. You're a real service dog, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, I'm working. I'm a real service dog. Oh, Chusaka, go away. I've had enough of you already today. Don't say that, because this working dog just saved your house from burning down. What do you mean? She smelled smoke coming from the outlet. It could be that Chusaka means well and wants to do the right thing, but nobody understands her. That's a bit hard to believe. Then what's this book? Oh, my math book. That's where I left it. Remember how Chusaka wanted to make you take it to school this morning? You're right. Add a girl, Chusaka. Well done. <clears throat> what a rain. My feet got wet to the bone. But this morning, Chusaka tried to get you to wear a different pair of shoes. Hmm, that's something. I should listen more closely to this smart little dog of ours. What? 
<laughs> Finally, they understand me. Can you believe that pixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. Tell anyone? Nobody. We promise. Uh, are you gonna open that thing or not? Huh. There's nothing there. Hmm. Is this a joke or something? Maybe she didn't feel like writing you anything. Then why would she put a note in there? Wait a second. And what if she wrote that letter with a special kind of invisible ink? Wow, I've never heard of it. If you want to keep what's written in a letter secret, you can write it with a special liquid called invisible ink or security ink. You can make invisible ink yourself by mixing lemon juice, milk, or baking soda with water. Then just dip a stick or a brush in it and write on a plain piece of paper like this. You can't see anything, right? To make the invisible ink visible again, the paper needs to be warmed up with something like an iron. But that's a secret. Well, Simka, you might be right. Only what about the iron? I can't use it. But your mom can, and right now she's doing the ironing. Yeah? Well, that changes everything. Hold on! If that really is a secret letter, then no one should be allowed to see it. Even your mother. What can I do then? Ah, uh, I know what. Mom, can you iron my shirt too, please, will ya? What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong, it's just that the pocket's wrinkled. Ah, sure, I'll do it. Since when did you start worrying about things like this? All done. Thanks, Mom. <sighs> that should do it. What? What is it? Huh? Tom Thomas, I really like you. <laughs> Katya. Katya is in love with you, isn't she? And what about you? Do you like her? Uh, I don't know. She does get straight A's. You like her. <laughs> you and Katya kissing in a tree. Kay no, let's oh. stop your teasing. Well, are you going to write her back? You think I should? Of course, silly. I'm scared that someone will see it. Then why don't you write it with invisible ink like she did? Yeah, go get a lemon. Nowadays, it isn't very common for people to write letters by hand and send them by regular mail. Today, people mostly send letters through the Internet. But even electronic letters should be written with some of the same simple rules of politeness used in handwritten letters. For instance, you need to write a greeting at the beginning of your letter, and a few kind words at the end are always appreciated. Something like hugs and kisses or all the best or see you soon. And before you send off your letter, it's best to read it through, to check for any mistakes. And one more thing. If you receive a message from someone, don't take too long to answer them, because they might think that you'd forgotten about them, and that can hurt their feelings. To say it simply, when you write, be polite. Go on, write. And what should I write? Come on, tell the truth. 
just write this. Forgive me, Katya. Only there's another girl I really like. My one and only Simka. Mm. No, Lick! If you don't like it, then why don't you think it up? Tom Thomas, just go ahead and write how you feel deep down in your heart for Katya. Katya, I like you too. Like that? Is that all I have to write? Would that be okay? It's lovely. K-I-S-S-I. Just zip it, will ya? Tom Thomas, is that everything? And did you make sure to check that you didn't make any mistakes? No, but I'll check right now. Huh, all the words disappeared. Well, if there's something wrong, only Katya will find it. They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The gramophone. And that's a photograph of my mom when she was little. <laughs> she sure looked happy, didn't she? Because parents were all happy when they were children. But then they grow up and start getting all gloomy and as boring as can be. Oh, what's this, do you know? A song about a screw? It's total nonsense. Nonsense? It's about a screw, which means it's practically about fixies. Why don't we listen to it and find out? If it's good, we can all dance together. How do you listen to this thing? Like this? Why don't we try to use the player? We won't fit in there. Look, right here it says gramophone record. See? So we need to find a gramophone player. Find what? Let's go to Grampus. Grampus, we found a song about a screw we want to hear. <laughs> We're looking for a player for a gramophone record. Ah, I understand. What you need is a gramophone. A gramophone is an old appliance that was made for playing back sound that was recorded onto records. If you want to turn on a gramophone, you need to turn the handle to wind up its spring. The spring makes the record spin. Then a needle is placed on top of the record, and as it moves through the groove on the record, it shakes a little, which makes a diaphragm, a sort of mini drum skin, start to vibrate. The big horn of the gramophone then makes the sound louder, and we hear a voice or music. The most amazing thing is that a gramophone doesn't have an electric motor or any electronics. That's right, you don't need electricity for a gramophone to play back the sound that's recorded on a record. That's because a gramophone is an entirely mechanical wonder. If you want to know, there is a gramophone in the office of Tom Thomas's dad. It's on the desk. Great, let's go. <laughs> Thanks would be nice. I can't find the on button. There is no on button. You need to grab that handle and turn it. Now take that thing and put it down onto the record. Hmm, it's not playing. Look, there's no needle in there. And where can we get one from? We can make it. Do you have any nails around here? Is this good? That'll be great! Verda, are you ready? Totally. Better cover your eyes. Working, listen. A little screw went for a run, and now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without a with no little screws in there. The bulldozer was a strong one until there was a thug, and then the mighty 
giant fell straight into the mud. Five, four, three, two, one. A little screw went for a run. And now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them, with no little screws in there. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them, with no little screws in there. Tom Thomas, what's that music playing? It's a gramophone record. Gramophone? I thought it was broken. We fixed this old... Uh, not we. I fixed this thing. Really? What a wonderful boy I've got. Other kids are breaking things and you fixed them. What do you say we play that record once more? I used to love it so much when I was little. The Mighty Crane was working until there was a pop. And then the Mighty Giant gave out and lost its top. Five, four, three, two, one. A little screw went for a run. And now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with no little screws in there. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them. Thomas's mom really dances super. Yeah, she knows how to have a good time, even though she's a grown-up. If you think a screw is nothing to